Charlie, in trying to understand reality, there are some fundamental aspects of the way things happen that we really should try to explore. And the place I like to begin is causality. Most people think it's just so obvious one thing causes another, but let's dig into that and look at causality and how it works in the physical world, psychological world, and in, in your ex experience in, in parapsychology. How, how, how do we look at this concept of causality? I look at it in terms of billiard balls to begin with. I, I suspect that all the early scientists played billiards, and so all their classical examples of causality are you hit this ball with so much force and it goes such and such a distance and all that kind of thing. And that is our ordinary picture of it. You know, you push on something and something happens. And it's a very useful concept for most things in life. But then there's psychological causality, you know. I will my hand to rise and it rises. I don't understand the interconnecting mechanisms the way you can follow billiard balls being hit with a cue. And yet we're used to it and it happens. But then funny things happen sometimes where the causality is not obvious. Two events, for instance, seem to reflect each other and it seems meaningful, and yet we can't see a connector, so we're liable to say, well, it's just coincidence. It doesn't really mean anything. And certainly some things can resemble each other when there's no actual connection between them, and it's coincidence. But sometimes it's so meaningful that it's hard to dismiss it. The classic example of this is Carl Jung's ideas about synchronicity. And he introduces it by describing a patient who was having uh, an analytic session with him and described a dream in which this golden scarab took part in it, which was a very unusual kind of dream for her. And as she was describing it, he heard a tapping against the window pane of his office and he opened it and the equivalent of a golden scarab flew in, the, the local kind of beetle. And, you know, that was just so meaningful for it to happen at that moment. It never happened any other time. And he talked about it as synchronicity and a causal connecting principle, something outside of causality. Now, I find that Jung's writings on synchronicity are actually confusing because I don't think he meant there was no cause at all when he said a causal. He meant it wasn't a physical cause, but there was a psychological cause that something about the investment this woman had in her dream and her psychological problems affected that beetle, so it came at that time. And this introduces the whole idea of another causal order or order of laws in addition to the ordinary physical ones we see. And this, in a sense, is what spirituality is all about. It's You could say spirituality is about the idea that besides the ordinary relationships we see in life, there's some other order, a more important order, that determines how things happen. And it's important that we synchronize with that, that we act in accordance with that somehow. And this is not just some psychological artifact or some psychological need, but something that is mediated through some fundamental, non-physical reality of the universe or of, of reality beyond the universe. Yes. Well, some people, you know, just put it down to God's will and that could be anything and there's no lawfulness to it. But other people say, you know, it's not that there isn't lawfulness in the universe. It's that in addition to the laws that we know on the ordinary physical level, there are other kinds of laws. And to give you an example, I don't consider myself psychic in any particular sense, but there have been a lot of occasions when my wife and I have had what I consider small psychic flashes, and they followed a certain pattern that suggests a law. The pattern was that something would happen to me or her during the day that was of interest to both of us, and the one would intend to tell the other when I got home that night. And I'd walk in the door or something like that, getting ready to tell her, and something would interrupt, and you know, I'd forget all about it. And a minute later, she'd spontaneously ask me about that kind of event, or vice versa. And it's like the law is that if you have an urge to communicate and it's foiled somehow by circumstances, it goes to some level of mind that telepathically transmits it, and it pops up in the other person's mind. The typical argument against all of this is that we admit that every event that uh, people really had, not the frauds and delusions, are real events, but what it doesn't take into account are all the non-coincidences that 
did, that occurred that, that, that were non-noteworthy. So if you have mm -hmm. a noteworthy event that maybe is one in a million, just to pick a number, maybe the non-noteworthy events are, are, are a hundred million. And an infinite number of things that could have happened didn't happen. So the one that did, we focus on. And that's a very rational line of thought to follow. And it's the reason that parapsychology did not content itself with just observing these synchronicities that happen in life, but took things into laboratory experiments where you knew exactly what coincidence should expect and then found that you had things that weren't likely to occur by coincidence. So the parapsychological work that you and others have done would, would tend to give a demonstration of, of what has uh, occurred in the natural world of this kind of synchronicity. Right. To look for things that occur that, that, that could explain, not, not the A causal, but how those unusual things were or had some kind of causal relationship. Right. And the causal relationship in a typical parapsychological experiment is some human being intending for something to happen, even though there's no physical way for that person to express affect it. And nevertheless, you get evidence that it happens. So causality is preserved. It's just a different kind of causality than ordinary physical causality. The argument against that says that if you have the physical world, it's a closed system. And if you are now postulating other entities, non-physical entities, how is it possible for non-physical entities to interact with physical entities? That's a, 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 a scientific non-starter. Well, I think it's defined as a non-starter. You're defining these other entities as unable to interact with the physical world, so of course they can interact with the physical world. And that, to me, is just an example of the mind tying itself up in knots. What we observe as actual data is that in parapsychological experiments, one person's intention sometimes creates an effect in someone else's mind or in the physical world. Whether you can explain it or not, it happens. That's data. And and you would tend to explain that in a way that postulates non-physical kinds of elements. You can't explain that in the physical world. Yeah. I mean, I'm not happy just saying it just happens. Like everybody else, I like to have some kind of explanation in my mind. So I think, you know, maybe there's some level of pure mind where this information gets transmitted or something. And that's not very specific yet. But in my view of science, data is king. The facts, what actually happens, take precedence over all your preferences and theories. That's just the way it is. Nobody's ever contradicted me on that, incidentally. Uh, people have avoided dealing with that, but nobody has ever said, no, theories are more important than facts. <laughs> all right, well, and, and the facts that you see are both the, uh, the uh, synchronicity, the so-called coincidences of our lives that occur, and then the taking of that into the laboratory under, under controlled conditions. Right. And you feel that the, the combination of both of those things has a high likelihood or a certain, a certitude of, 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 uh, of giving us high confidence that there exists something beyond the physical. Yes, indeed.